Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a very recent discovery of a very new type of a black hole that we were finally able to confirm deep within our own galaxy. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So we've actually been looking for these types of black holes for quite a long time now and we were able to discover what's known as an intermediate mass black hole in August uh, of 2017. These were actually very hypothetical at first, we didn't really know if they were real, but we finally were able to see one and we were finally able to get so much closer to understanding of how our galaxy is created and essentially how these massive black holes create supermassive black holes. So anyway, we're going to be going to the center of our galaxies here, here just to see what's there on the inside. Very, very close to the supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A star, which is the uh, black hole at the center of our galaxy. The uh, scientists from University of Keio in Japan Specifically here, I believe it's uh, a person by the name of Dr. Tomoharu Oka. Um, basically, it was looking at the uh, various types of uh, molecular gas that is present very close to uh, this region. And uh, using various simulations, they were able to establish what would actually happen if a black hole was inside of this gas. And it just so happens that they were able to see very similar effects in real life to what they simulated. And using uh, these simulations, the team believes they discovered what's known as uh, CO0.40.22, another name for a very unusual intermediate mass black hole. And let's actually use uh, Universe Sandbox uh, 2 and try to discover exactly what was found and what uh, it means to uh, science and to our understanding of the universe. So here's our galaxy, the Milky Way. There is Sagittarius A star in the middle there. Our sun is somewhere over here. And um, basically we're looking at the molecular clouds very, very, very close to this region right here, almost within this region. Now we're going to actually slow down time here just so that the galaxy doesn't fall apart. And just so that we can actually see things in a little bit uh, more human terms. And so we're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to choose a black hole and place uh, the uh, black hole that's about 100,000 masses of the sun. And so right there, right in the middle of the Milky Way, very close to Sagittarius A star, is this black hole known as CO-040. Uh, or I, I believe there's a point in there missing somewhere. Yeah, this is this should be 0 0.40 and then dash 0 0.22 star. Star refers to the fact that this is a black hole. Um, and if we were to zoom in, this is actually what it would look like. It's about 100,000 masses of the sun, so it's only about 2% of the mass of uh, the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star, so it's significantly smaller. We can even compare them in size by basically placing them one to, uh, next to each other. And uh, it's essentially there, just kind of flying through space, disturbing gas and creating no other fuss. And the reason we were able to discover it is because of this fuss that it creates inside the molecular cloud. Now here we can actually accelerate time a little bit now just to see how things uh, spin. And basically, the interesting thing about this black hole is that, well, it's inactive, so it doesn't really have any accretion disk, it doesn't have any uh, jets coming out of it, and it would be very, very challenging to see otherwise. Uh, and the reason why it's important that we've discovered this is because we were actually predicting these black holes for quite some time now. We actually thought that these exist in the center of the galaxy, and uh, a lot of them orbit around the central supermassive black hole, but we were never able to see them. We were actually never able to detect them because it's very, very difficult to find them. They're practically invisible. They don't emit any light. They don't really cause any disturbance otherwise. And just because this one was inside the molecular cloud, we were able to see it slightly easier. Now, uh, let's just actually compare its size to our own uh, sun, for example, just so you can get an idea of how 
small this thing actually is. So our sun is right there. And this is essentially smaller than our sun. It's maybe closer in size to actually Jupiter. So Jupiter would be just a little bit, sm uh, a little bit smaller than this black hole in terms of the actual size. Um, but so, okay, why is it important that we found it? Well, these black holes uh, are sort of hypothesized to create the supermassive black holes at the center of the galaxy. So we think that this is actually the progenitor or basically the, um, the part of creation of these larger black holes. And so one day this one might actually collide with this one and make Sagittarius A star even bigger. Um, we are still kind of not sure how these supermassive black holes such, such as Sagittarius A star are created. But we think now because we found this other one uh, smaller next to it, um, we believe that maybe this is how the supermassive black holes are created. In other words, let me just run a simulation for you just so you can actually see. Okay, so here we go. We're going to try to simulate this uh, in very, very brief terms. So here is a progenitor supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. It has a bit of a Christian disk going on and it has other black holes orbiting around it. And there's probably other stars here. We can actually just add a few stars for fun as well. Let's just take a few like maybe just actually random gener randomly generated uh, main sequence stars. And uh, we're going to just place all of this together just so you can kind of see how all of this is going to interact together. And then there's going to be a few uh, intermediate black holes in between that are going to be falling inside of this black hole. So I'm actually going to decelerate time just so that you see how all of this starts interacting at the, in real time or maybe almost real time. So there are ring, accretion, uh, accretion ring is orbiting. Everything seems to be working. Let's accelerate time and see what happens. So you'll notice that the uh, intermediate black holes will slowly start approaching the uh, black hole in the middle. And they will actually start disturbing the accretion disk, obviously. They'll start disturbing the stars orbiting around this black hole. But most importantly, they're eventually going to get absorbed by this black hole. And as they get absorbed, as basically it acquires more and more mass, it uh, is going to grow in size and create larger and larger um, event horizon around it. Or as it's more recently become known, the apparent horizon. So let's just run the simulation for a little bit. And it looks like it's actually going to be really slow because of the accretion disk. But we might have no no other way of doing this. So we're going to disable trails and just wait. And so here comes the first black hole that's about to get absorbed. It's falling right into the supermassive black hole and there you go. And as the, uh, the black hole in the middle acquires more and more mass, it's going to start attracting more and more things. And so essentially this is what we think may have happened in the beginning of our galaxy when the uh, black hole in the middle ate all of the other black holes nearby and grew larger and larger and larger. It might be actually easier to see if I remove the, uh, the dust particles that are orbiting around this. So I might have to actually just go ahead and delete all of the particles because it's a little bit easier to see. But there you go. You can kind of see things will start falling into the black hole slowly and it's going to start growing larger in size. So if I were to enable mass here, you would see that with time it starts acquiring more mass. And this is what we think may have happened. We were the uh, theorizing about this for many years, but couldn't really prove it until we discovered the intermediate uh, black hole in August of 2017. And now we think we understand the creation of the galaxy a little bit better and it seems to be making a little bit more sense to us. And so essentially that's why this finding was kind of important. This is why I wanted to talk about it in this video. And hopefully in the in the future um, in future findings, or in the, I guess if we keep doing more research around this region of space, we might discover more of these intermediate black holes and thus proving this uh, hypothesis and basically making it a theory of creation of the galaxy and creation of uh, the supermassive black holes in the middle. And well, anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And as you can see, my supermassive black hole shredded some of the stars and created an accretion disk naturally. And this is essentially what these black holes do really, really well. Anyway, come back here tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out.
And as always, bye bye. And if you still haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and potentially even supporting this channel on Patreon. Check out the links for both on the page or in the description below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.